Well, let me just free associate just a little bit about, about Sue. I'm, I'm really struck with that very last thing you, you said, Blaine, that you ask her something and then she laughs and says, oh, I wish you wouldn't have asked me that. Um, you know, I'd just like to sort of meditate on that a little bit. What does that mean? I mean, ordinarily, if you ask a patient a question that evokes things, they, they're, in one sense, they're grateful for it. Mm -hmm, you're doing, mm -hmm, your, you're doing mm -hmm. your work. But she says, I wish you wouldn't have asked me that. What do you make of that? What, what does it feel like to you when she says that? Mm, that she's, she, she feels like she's being put on the spot a little bit. And she's having to look at feelings that she, she, she it, I feel like there's this untapped area of feeling that she's hesitant to go there. And, and if I ask a question which sort of opens up the lid there, she, she starts feeling that and she resists it. And if you were to say to her, uh, you know, if we, again, if you were focused very much on, on the here and now interaction, you were to say to her, you know, Sue, I'm, I'm really struck when I, when I ask you that question. Um, and, and you say, I, I wish you wouldn't have asked that. Um, I, I'm thinking what that means to you. It, it, it makes me think that, that this is really hard for you, uh, that it's a, it's a painful thing. There are things that it's very difficult for you to talk about. Is that what you mean by it? What would she say? She would, she would say, um, yeah, I don't like looking at this. I thought I'd put these feelings to bed years ago, and, and I, uh, it's hard for me to, to, to bring them up again because for years I suffered with you know, really low self-image, and um, starting with my childhood and then through my marriage. And for me to take an honest look at some of this, it's, it's hard. It, it, it brings up old yeah. feelings. Uh, sort of exists, uh, finds his identity by doing, by performing something. Uh, the, the idea of uh, just sheer being, mm -hmm. uh, he got to justify his existence by, yeah. by performance in right. some way. Uh, and he's, he's constantly anxious about that. You know, I'm, th I'm just thinking as you're talking about uh, uh, someone that I saw in consultation just a couple of weeks ago. He came from another country, was just here briefly, and I saw him for a couple of hours. And I won't go into the whole story, but, but what was happening with him is that he had lost a very close friend. Uh, it had been about two years before then. But since then, this was a, a man in his 50s. And since then, he has, he has been very frightened of doing so many things that he could do with ease before that everything felt dangerous to him, even swimming or skiing. And so he, there was a lot of um, sort of manifest death anxiety. Uh, which is not unusual uh, when um, you lose someone. I mean, um, one of the aspects of grief that we don't often explore uh, is the fact that the part of grief is that it's a confrontation with your own death. And so with this particular person, we, we began talking about there was so much death anxiety uh, so that he became frightened of everything. So we, then we talked about death anxiety for a while. and. Um, and then uh, I, I tried to e explore uh, with him uh, about what there was about death that frightened him. That sounds like a stupid question, I know, but you know, it, it really isn't. You sort of take a look, well, well what about the experience of death is, is so frightening to you? And uh, he got pretty quickly uh, into the idea that there was uh, so much that he hadn't done that he could have done. 